Today, there's more scammers than ever. Ponzi schemes and crypto rock pools are reaching a breaking point. So the market cap is $2.168 trillion. And now the market, oh! Oh, it went to zero! You seen it live, a goddamn rock pool, baby. And more than ever, it's becoming increasingly hard to know what is truth and what is a scam anymore, underscoring the need for reliable sources of information. But among the legions of scammers and thieves, just one name strikes fear into the black hearts, CoffeeZilla. If you are an influencer who thinks that you can delete some tweets and never get caught, you might be wrong about that. We will eventually find you and we will expose you. For years, he's led a one-man crusade against scam artists and confidence men. From small-time crooks to multi-billion dollar fraud schemes, CoffeeZilla has had a hand in taking all of them down. Here's just a few of his many victims, starting with Phase K, Sam Pepper, and the Save the Kids crypto fraud. Now, if you've been paying any attention to crypto in the past few years, you'll probably know that it's become a haven for shady dealings and scam artists. That being said, the Save the Kids token is the platonic ideal of a crypto rug pool. It's a perfect example of a general template for any aspiring scumbag to follow. And it all began when a group of massively popular influencers released tweets and videos promoting a new charity token. It was called the Save the Kids token, a new cryptocurrency which would give a portion of every transaction to charity. And who was peddling it? Rife Scum, the infamous internet prankster and general idiot, was one of the most well known. Along with him was Summer Ray, an Instagram model, Joel Morris, the founder of a YouTube support group, and various members of Face Clan, including Jarvis and Kay. It was a simple operation. Once they had posted the promotions to their social media, they let the hype build a little bit as their fan base brought in and purchased tokens. Then, just one day after release, they sold their massive shares in a coordinated dump. The value of the token pretty much immediately dropped to almost nothing, bottoming out at around a tenth of a cent. By exploiting their audience's gullibility and their willingness to support a good cause, these influencers made a quick buck. As these events unfold, the importance of having a tool to compare and verify what's being told to the public becomes apparent, helping to separate fact from fiction. And for a while, it looked like that was where the story was going to end. Pretty much much all the influencers deleted their tweets and publicity about the scandal, trying to wipe the paper trail clean. Meanwhile, the victims were left without anyone listening or caring about what happened. It was just another crypto pump and dump scheme to add to the ever-growing list and the scammers were going to get away with it once again. That was until CoffeeZilla got involved. In a series of videos involving hours upon hours of investigations and interviews, he uncovered it all. One of the reasons the Save the Kids token had gained a massive following was because of its claims that anyone who owned more than 0.5% of the total supply of tokens would only be able to sell 20% of their stockpile within each 24-hour period. If this had been true, then the whole thing would have been protected from a pump and dump scheme. Scheme. But obviously the influencers all sold their tokens within minutes of each other, so what happened here? Well, by trawling through the code surrounding the project and comparing test files, CoffeeZilla uncovered a tiny change that enabled the whole scam. Single change in the code. The old code of Save the Kids Test 2 read that you must wait a full 24 hours before you sell again. The new code, which changed at the last minute, changed this anti-whale to one minute. You must wait a minute before you sell again. And this is the only change. They changed the token just so they could premeditate this whole thing and almost remove the anti-whale mechanism completely. They turned it from being a code that wouldn't let whales sell off in less than five days into a code that lets you sell off in five minutes. Just one value had been altered. Instead of being limited to selling 20% every 24 hours, the influencers had only been limited to 20% every 60 seconds. So instead of having to wait five days to sell off their tokens, they could do it all in five minutes. Now he had proven this was all premeditated, designed to be a scam from the very start. Next, CoffeeZilla needed to link it to the influencers themselves. Because of the anonymous nature of crypto wallets, all he had was a set of different numbers where the dumping transactions send the money. It was back to the drawing board. After another session of going through deleted tweets, archived conversations, and a whole host of other information, CoffeeZilla finally found the smoking gun. Because I've traced some of these influencers' crypto wallets and will be revealing what they did with the crypto coins they've promoted to you and are now trying to hide the evidence now that it's all coming out. Or at least one of them. In an earlier crypto scheme that Phase K was involved in, he had sent a fan some crypto for a giveaway. By cross-referencing the wallet that he had sent money to with the date of the giveaway, CoffeeZilla could then find out Phase K's wallet address. And surprise, surprise, it matched one of the wallet addresses that had dumped the Save the Kids token and profited off the scam. Repeating this process also linked both Phase Jarvis and Phase Nikan to the scam. He had the proof, it was all right there on the records, 
all that was left was to release it. So what happened next? What you'd hope would be the case would be the Fed swooping in to take over the investigation. A lengthy trial and a court case would have uncovered the full scam and it should have ended with lengthy prison sentences for the scammers along with reparations to the victims. Of course, this is far from the truth. So far, none of the perpetrators have ever even faced charges, but that doesn't mean they didn't face at least some consequences. For Ricegum, it was the final nail in the coffin for his career. His popularity and his reputation were in tatters after a history of previous scams and eventually he stopped posting to his YouTube channel and completely vanished from the internet. Phase K, Phase Jarvis and Phase Nikam were all suspended from Phase Clan and lost their jobs, although they kept uploading content for at least a while after, but eventually they were also faced with a slow descent into obscurity. Unfortunately, Phase K recently came back to upload a video on a new version of Fortnite and immediately got over 500,000 views after a month of inactivity. Phase Jarvis has also still been active. You would think that actually scamming his audience might have some sort of impact, but either they never heard about it or they just don't really care. With this whole scenario highlighting how easy it is for false narratives to spread without a reliable way to track and compare information. And while most of the scammers' careers took a nosedive, the fact that they never even saw any real consequences for their crimes is kind of sickening, especially considering how young their audiences are and how much trust they would have mistakenly put into these shadow people. But some satisfaction can still be taken from the amounts of money they were scamming. These people who had millions and millions of fans threw nearly all of it away for just tens of thousands of dollars. It wasn't some billion dollar fraud. They wasted years of potential earnings on one stupid little scam. But thanks to CoffeeZilla, they at least faced a small amount of justice, even if it wasn't enough. But at least some of these scammers do, like Sam Bankman Freed, who now faces 110 years in prison after being found guilty in all seven criminal fraud counts. But the reasons for his demise and the uncovering of these scams isn't as clear as you would initially think. You see, I was going through this article talking about his court case, and it turned out that so many media companies provide differing opinions on who he actually is and why this is all happening in the first place. On far right sites like Infowars, they link his role in donating to Joe Biden and highlight tweets claiming he was one of the people most responsible for Biden being in office. And was also one of his biggest donors, whereas left-wing sources claim Sam Bangman freed siphoned money from FTX to his hedge funds, while claiming to prioritize customer fund safety. He also made significant political donations to promote favorable cryptocurrency legislation, but they focus more on crypto legislation whilst ignoring his connections to the Democrats and the president himself. More than 300 articles were published on this, and I found it interesting that right and left coverage were evenly distributed, but the narrative varied significantly. I'm looking at this on Ground News, a platform I've been using for the last year to compare coverage and get the full story, and they're actually sponsoring this video. You see, in these complex times where scams and misinformation are rampant, the significance of accessing clear, unbiased information cannot be overstated, especially when it comes to crypto scams and fake gurus. And one of the best tools to overcome this is Ground News. And I really appreciate that they show the data that mainstream media doesn't, like who owns each source and how factual their reporting practices are. So go to ground.news moon, where you can subscribe through my link for less than $1 a month or take advantage of 40% off unlimited access to the Vantage subscription, which is what I use. It's their biggest discount of the year and I encourage you to check it out today. While a lot of scams operate solely through crypto, not all of them do. There's still plenty of old, tried and tested scam techniques still being used today, and one of the most profitable of these is the Ponzi scheme. The basic idea is that you borrow from person A to pay back person B, then pay back person A by borrowing from person C. The people behind the scam keep building and building, skimming money off of the top, until eventually all collapses. And that's exactly what happened with a brokerage called Trader's Domain. It was first brought to coffee's at his attention when numerous people contacted him saying they had been investing in it, but after a year, they could no longer access their funds. This was along with a CFTC investigation into the company alleging a $145 million Ponzi scheme. So the authorities already knew about everything that was going on, right? Well, not exactly. As CoffeeZilla went through the complaints, he started to notice similarities between seemingly completely different scams. Whether it was an NFT scam, a classic investment scam, or a get rich quick scheme, all the money was going to the same place, traders domain. The scale and depth of the fraud was far greater than the government knew, and it all linked back to the man running Traders Domain, Ted Safranco. Safranco had been a small-time scam artist for a while, getting his start as the protege of another slime ball selling courses on how to get rich quick. In 2018, he had founded Traders Domain out of the spare room of his shared house, something CoffeeZilla had only known because he'd somehow gotten in contact with his former flatmates. Through weeks of hard work, CoffeeZilla pieced together a massive web of crypto transitions, shell companies and scam artists which made up the Ponzi scheme. Internet scumbags had been getting paid commissions to promote various schemes and scams, which all ended up sending money to Traders Domain. Table. We traced even more money that had come in. According to them, roughly 450 million went into Traders Domain. 
at least $500 million had been filtered through to Ted Franco's offshore holdings. Even this was already illegal. But what made it worse was that the trader's domain platform was entirely faked. Anyone using it had only seen a fake number. In reality, their money went straight into Ted's pockets. CoffeeZilla had gathered evidence of all of this, documents, invoices, and transactions all leading straight back to the perpetrators. And when CoffeeZilla finally confronted Ted with all of this, he tried to weasel his way out of course. First he said that he wasn't in control at all, despite a signed letter acknowledging his ownership along with video footage of him saying he owned it. When this predictably didn't work, he pivoted to talking about family values and the downfall of society. So what happened next? The CFTC still hasn't updated their case against the fraudsters, although criminal charges are pending and could be a announced any day now. The main perpetrators, including Ted Sofranco, are banned from ever trading again. Lots of the perpetrators have gone on the run, whilst lower level scammers within the system like the influencer Stormy Wellington are still operating to this day. As for Ted though, he has pretty much disappeared from the face of the internet. According to the shady article from July of 2023, Ted was getting into yet another trading business, despite his trading ban and the fact that he'd been caught scamming people out of millions. Weirdly, the article even mentions his appearances on CoffeeZilla as a selling point. Other than that, the CFTC secured a $3.8 million judgment against Franco, a pitifully small amount considering the amount he stole. Hopefully, it's just a taste of what's to come. As the case is progressing at a snail's pace though, and the figures given by the US government are only a fraction of what he actually stole, it looks like he might be getting away with it. It's a disgrace that a YouTube channel can conduct a far more thorough and fruitful investigation than an entire government agency, especially when it concerns a fraud scheme worth hundreds of millions of dollars. What's even worse is that Canadian authorities had already gotten involved far earlier. These scammers never see anything wrong with what they're doing. Just from that interview, you can tell Ted is living in his own world where he's fighting for family values and doing nothing wrong because the whole system is corrupt. But people like Ted just add to the misery by defrauding thousands of normal, hardworking people out of their life savings. They need to be stopped, otherwise they'll just keep doing it over and over again. But with how underfunded and clueless government agencies are about tracking down these criminals, that won't happen anytime soon. For now at least, Franco has gone into hiding. But if he doesn't get arrested, he will be back to scamming sooner rather than later. And with every investigation coffees that it conducts, it becomes even more clear that he's both the first and the last line of defense. So far, we've seen a lot of people who pretty much got away with it, despite having their crimes exposed for everyone to see. But our next scammer wasn't so lucky, and his name is Jay Mazzini. At first glance, Jay seems like a run-of-the-mill influencer. He had tons of videos of him giving out large amounts of money on camera, and he ran his own clothing brand. But underneath the surface, he was running a few scam operations. One of these were his fake giveaways. In Instagram videos, he would tell his followers that the first few hundred people to buy nine things of his awful line of clothes would receive tens of thousands of dollars. Obviously, the money would never come, and anyone who bought his clothes got duped. From there, he would move on to Bitcoin scams, telling people he would buy Bitcoin for 5% over the market price. The reason he gave was insanely dumb. According to him, he'd been banned from the major exchanges for simply buying too much. And despite how ludicrous it sounds, Jay got a ton of people on the hook with this one. It wasn't for small amounts either. Jay was getting payments in the hundreds of thousands from each of his victims, and once he got the money, he'd delay and deflect as much as possible. One of his tricks was spoofing and faking wire transfers, making it look to the victims like he'd sent the money. A few days later though, their accounts still wouldn't be credited. When it all came to a head, Jay even claimed that he'd been robbed at gunpoint for $18 million, a completely ridiculous lie. And all of this information was collated and collected by CoffeeZilla after months of work digging deeper into the case and listening to victims. However, by far his biggest scam was centered around a company Jay owned called Halal Financing. Using his shared religion and his outward image of charity to convince people, Jay would then manipulate people into investing with him. And just like the Bitcoin scam, he was happy to take people's money, but they pretty much never saw any returns or even what they initially invested. And in total, Jay scammed at least $8 million through the scheme alone. Usually once coffees that exposes people like this, it's pretty much the end of the story. They go into hiding, disappear from the internet, and their victims get left high and dry. But not the case for Jay Mazzini. A few months after CoffeeZilla started a series of videos on the scammer, he was arrested. Not for the scams, but for kidnapping someone he had been feuding with over Instagram. It was an open and shut case, especially when his former friends and co-conspirators all ratted him out. Once he was in custody though, the wheels of justice for his scams finally started rolling. Two years later, an FBI investigation using exactly the same things CoffeeZilla had uncovered got him on charges of wire fraud, taking a plea deal he could face up to 20 years in prison. It will probably be far less 
less than this, but it's much better than getting away scot-free. However, it's still a shame that only the most blatant, dumbest and well-known scammers get these kinds of consequences. Wire fraud is a very broad crime legally, covering a whole range of different scams, but with evidence that Jay had intentionally manipulated and faked wire transfers, it made it much more simple to prosecute. Now usually when a scammer's empire falls apart, it's a cause for celebration, but the next victim of CoffeeZilla and their collapse leaves a bittersweet taste in the mouth. Disrupt used to be one of the fastest growing, most innovative and well-edited channels on YouTube. Their stylized coverage of the dark, underbelly of the tech world made them an overnight success, but that all changed with one now deleted video made by the channel's co-founder Jack. Instead of their usual documentary style content, the video was an investment pitch. Jack was offering 10% of the channel for sale to the community and its subscribers for the crazy total price of $500,000. It wasn't a scammy idea on the surface of it, people who bought shares of the channel would see profits based on how the channel was doing, whilst funding the growth of the channel itself. The warning sign was the sense of urgency in the video, with Jack telling people that the channel would need restructuring and might fall apart if he didn't reach the 500k goal. Path B is the path that we'll have to go down if we do not reach our funding goal by the deadline. This would mean a complete restructuring of the internal operations here at Disrupt. This path is not ideal. So, if you want to secure the future of the Disrupt down path A, please consider investing. Lots of people got dupes and happily invested around 100k into the channel. The problems came, as Coffee Zeta pointed out in his video on it, with what Jack actually needed the money for. You see, Jack was actually $500,000 in debt at this point, owing money to lawyers as well as his own co-founder. Jack had bought out his co-founder's portion of the channel for way too much and needed a way to keep up with the monthly payments. Once people found out the truth, in large part thanks to Coffee Zeta, it all fell apart. Jack left the channel and the chaos behind the scenes had a massive effect on their videos. Before the whole scandal and CoffeeZilla's video came out, the channel was easily breaking 1 million on their uploads. Today, they're extremely lucky if they even reach 200,000 views with their best upload, since not even hitting 400,000 views in a very long time. Jack pretty much torpedoed the channel and didn't get nearly enough money out of it when it vanished into thin air. And if CoffeeZilla hadn't intervened, he may have well successfully misled his audience and kept it all running. Fortunately though, in this case, the Disrupt channel made a very good choice of refunding everyone because of how his shady dealings were exposed. So CoffeeZilla has possibly been one of the most effective and diligent fighters against scams in modern history, but all of the stories we've gone through so far pale in comparison to his work in taking down the FTX fraud. You probably know the general story of FTX by now, so despite how interesting it is, we won't go through all of it. But what lots of people don't know is how integral Coffee Zeta was in raising the alarm about Sam Bankman Fried and bringing him to justice. Whilst mainstream media outlets were still talking about how he was a genius or discussing his amazing ethics, Coffee Zeta was seen past the image. While everyone from celebrities to investment firms were fawning over him, Coffee Zeta was calling him out. In April of 2022, Coffee Zeta uploaded a video titled Crypto CEO Accidentally Describes Ponzi Scheme. In it, he dissects an interview Sam gave where he talks about his crypto business and how he gives things inflated, meaningless value. Sam pretty much lays it out like this. Step one, take a box with nothing of value. Step two, assign it a token and create $20 million worth of value out of thin air. Step three, wait for people to take notice and invest in the box and the tokens. Step four, get investment firms involved. Step five, profit. Sam did this completely seriously, just laying out his scheme and even doubled down when people interviewing him called him out about how it was a Ponzi scheme. How do you explain this? How do you explain the fact that your some of some of the people who worked with you for years, your employees have come out and said, there's no way he didn't know about these back doors. There's no way he didn't know what Caroline was doing when you guys were very close. The offices were right next to each other. I mean, how do you expect us to believe this story you're spinning? I mean, I, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I had a lot going on um, and I was spread thin. I was a bit less grounded than I had been before, um, and I lost track of a lot of important things. It took over six months for the rest of the world to catch up and realize what was going on. Fast forward to today, and Sam Bankman Fried is definitely going to prison after the recent trial. Like all Ponzi schemes, people found out his box was actually worth nothing, and they had all been duped. Undoubtedly, the process was sped up by CoffeeZilla's videos on the topic, but on top of that, anyone who saw his video in April and took their money out owes that rescue to CoffeeZilla as well. It's impossible to tell how many people's life savings he prevented from being stolen because of this video. Now, we didn't have enough time to go into nearly enough detail or even cover all of the scammers and slime balls that CoffeeZilla has exposed. Without him, the internet would be a far more dangerous and unforgiving place. It might seem like scammers never see consequences, and that it's completely free money for anyone without an ounce of morals, 
But as long as Kofi Zen and people like him exist, there will always be someone to catch these scumbags out and expose their crimes.